like no other, from lifting the hopes of a billion with his fight at ICJ to defending Bharat's cause in the Kulbushan Jadav case at The Hague, which saved an Indian from death penalty, Mr. Salve has been the go-to legal luminary for Bharat. Thank you. Ladies Thank you very much. You. Thank you very much. Mr. Salve, I, I said this, our next session is with the Prime Minister, but I could not have done this day without you. And uh, I want to start by saying thank you to you. All right. And I want to say that to if here. there's one person who has fought for the Republic Media Network, and he's the person, he's the person, he's the force, he's the mind. When I was in jail, I remember his arguments, and I can only even tell you the policemen, the prison authorities, and everybody inside was also following what Harish Salve was saying in the court. So thank you very much, sir. This is a very emotional moment for me, and uh, I in, wanted to say thank you. You know, in everything. that lies the hope for this country, that even the common people now have started looking beyond your politicians. Sir. Sir, the theme is Bharat the next decade, because we have very limited time today. And that is Bharat the next decade. Sir. Sir. Beyond the politics of India. Yes, sir. This growing nation, a nation which is now anxiously waiting for its day in the sun. And I think that's where we are headed. Today, when I walk in the streets of London, sir, it's not, ouch, here comes an Indian, it's, wow, here comes an Indian. Wow. That's amazing. So from where you are, you are India's number one jurist, legal voice, one of the biggest international lawyers. How do you view Bharat the next decade? And from the point of view of jurisprudence and law, what needs to be done we to need, get us there? We need, to, uh, get the mic we need to get our courts in sync with the rest of India. You don't think they are? They are. You cannot run a 21st century India with 19th century mindset courts. And that's what we have. Wow. You believe our courts are not with the times? No, they are not. And I, I say so because I'm a part of the system. And I say so in a positive sense. Not, not to denigrate or degrade anybody because that doesn't help. But there is a lot of catching up to do. There is a lot of catching up to do at all levels. Domain expertise has been brought into government. Domain expertise has to be brought into the judicial system. Can you expand on that? So if you have commercial courts, you must have judges who understand commerce. You cannot have judges who look blank when you talk of competition. You cannot have judges who look blank when you talk of financial services. And that domain expertise has to come so that the lower rung of judiciary Sir. is repaired. Our Supreme Court has to go back to being what it was meant to be, the Supreme Court of India, not yet another court of India which pokes its nose in everything. Wow, that's, uh, that's going to make headlines coming from you, Mr. Salve. Yeah, Rhythm it, would it like may. to take no, that it, forward. It should, because today, unfortunately, the Supreme Court is hearing appeals from amending of pleadings, hearing appeals from every small little case which gets decided, by the way. You know, I now work in different jurisdictions, India and another jurisdiction. In United Kingdom, nine out of ten cases come to an end in the court of first instance. Yeah. We have to get there. Otherwise, this disrepair in our judicial system is not going to get sorted. The common man's interface with justice, you have seen this for yourself. Yes, sir. The common man's interface with justice is first in the criminal justice system with the magistrate sir. and in the civil justice system with the district judge. And they have to be of fine fettle. Yeah. And when they are of fine fettle, the pressure on your high courts will go down. And then your high courts have to be brought up to mark. The commercial side of the high court, today Delhi high court has some very good judges, but some very few very good judges. We need a lot more. We need a much wider base. And we have to get back the legal system into a pyramid. Today it's like a rectangular block. Everything goes from floor to floor. That's not how legal systems can work. Right, there has to be a pyramidical structure. Bulk gets sorted out at the lower level. A much smaller at mid. And Good right at the top, question. important questions Very few. of law. Rhythm. Mr. Salvi, simple question. The sedition law, 
whether it's the privilege of breach, alleged privilege of breach, parliamentary motion case that you fought for us, whether it's words from the Supreme Court or the High Court also needs to understand that they cannot keep intimidating or getting intimidated when there are pleas before them, the bail applications. I want to ask you about this certain narrative that's created where the democracy, they say, the constitution, they say, is under threat. I remember your words when you spoke even about uh, your guru, uh, Palkiwala, that it's time, only time India ever suffered was the emergency. Do you think that this narrative that continues to be created in the courts needs to stop and what's going to get these vested interests Correct. to stop? Cons whose constitution under threat? The constitution of certain political parties or the constitution of India? Yes. I don't see any threat to the constitution of India. Till constitution of India lives in our hearts, nobody can kill it, not the politicians, not the judges. It is India which is spirited. Who brought India out of emergency? Not the courts. The courts succumbed. It's the people of India who brought India out of emergency. Mrs. Gandhi realized she cannot continue this nonsense anymore. And that spirit has to continue till we have democracy in our heart. Today, I have seen the change in the political system. You have seen it, I have seen it. India has transitioned from a... And I, I don't mean this derisively. India has transitioned from an English-speaking public school culture to sons of the soil running the country. And running it very differently. Well said, I, I, I say something. I, speaking for myself, I would yes. not be able to work if the courts went into Hindi. But should it be done, I don't see any reason why not. So, and I'm not being populist. The point is, India has to be run by Indians. People respect us now because they feel India is being run by Indians. What? Yes, sir. So just one question before I ask uh, Arnab to ask you a question. You've spoken about the word nepotism. You've spoken about your father was in the Congress and yet you chose to be a solicitor general in the Vajpayee government. How did that work? One question. Second, diplomatically we've seen the Jadhav right. case that you what? Uh, the Jadhav case that you won. I also want to know today when we get diplomatic victory in the Navy officers who've now been brought back, how is this system in India really going to be seen? See, uh, it's always, today I don't think you see any real nepotism and it's only, uh, hopefully, it's, it's in the fossils of history that it has now been put away. Yes, sir. I don't think any appointments in recent times can, you can point a finger and say so-and-so's nephew or so-and-so's uncle has been made. When I was to be made Solicitor General of India by the Vajpayee government, it mattered little to Vajpayee that my father was a member of parliament in the opposition party. And that's the mindset which they have to get. If you want talent, you can't hold people to uh, silly ideas like of their ideology or their parents' ideology or their uncle's ideology. Family should become irrelevant to your movement in life. The second is, how are we seen today? Today we are seen as a powerhouse. Today India is seen as a powerhouse. And the world, uh, look at the United Kingdom, the economy is in shambles and there is no hope in sight. Today, they are most worried about their wobbly political system. We don't know the next elections. Will Labour win? If it wins, will it win a clear majority? Right. Or are they going to be in this mess and in the meanwhile, everything dwindles? People in England today worry about heating their homes in winter. And they call themselves a developed country. So, Believe me, I mean, every, the infrastructure in the United Kingdom is in shambles, absolute shambles. And look at us, we are changing by the day. Yes, so, sir. India is seen as a powerhouse and yeah. India is a powerhouse. Yeah. And it's about time we showed the world we are one. I just have a couple of minutes because of the Prime Minister is coming and, you know, the security clearance. But I must ask, do you agree with the collegium system? In Bharat, the next decade, should the system of judges selecting and electing judges continue to be... I really want you to speak straight on this, sir. It should never have been, and it should certainly not be. The collegium system should the collegium be scrapped. System, the collegium system was a band-aid on a wound. The political system at that time had started completely destroying the judicial appointment process by deviating from convention. Believe me, some of our finest judges came from appointments by the government. Where did Chinnaparedi come from? Where did Dea Desai come from? Where did the great Krishnayar, the jurist, come from? Krishnayar was a communist from Kerala. He was in the communist government. 
He was made one of the finest judges ever. Are you Who willing, appointed him? Government of Are India you willing to engage in a public debate with CJI, DY, Chandra Chud on this? What is there to debate? Show me one country in the world where judges appoint judges. And show me wow. one show me one authority, wow. one sociological research which says if judges don't appoint judges, the independence of judiciary is compromised. Incredible. Today I'm getting a lot of headlines from the sports. No, but that, I have always said this. Wow. I, 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 let me take that. I, I don't agree I, with you the are also, You are also on the committee on one nation, one election. Yes. yes. Therefore, you are advising on whether we can have all state and government elections together. Will it, will the we committee see it happen? is not me. Uh, no, the committee. You. But will we see it happen or is it they going to be deferred and deferred? Because I would it, like to comment. But would let's it happen? See. Would you like to see it happen? Well, let's see. Can 2029 be a simultaneous election you, for states you'll, and centers? You'll know the report will be made public shortly. By, by when? Shortly. When shortly? Shortly. Quite short. Quite short. Yes. But possible in the realm of possibility. No, I don't want to. I okay. don't know. One last one, Rindam, and sure. then we have to close. Sir, exactly what Arna was asking you. This is something we're very fond of. We want to know whether there will be simultaneous elections, but also shifting away from here. You're now living in the UK. A lighter question, a piano-playing lawyer, someone whom, who should actually be called here to play the piano for us once, once upon a time. How are you, other than this, looking at your work? Do you think the Indian courts and the way they're working virtually is there to stay? See, a lot I'll of people miss him here as well. No, no, I should, I should tell you the basic difference, and I put it in one sentence. You have to start working by a calendar and a diary. You have to stop working in a way where... This is the problem with the Indian mindset. Your time is valuable, everybody else's time is hopeless. So a judge will fix your case and make you wait till 4 o'clock. Unheard of. I, know, I knew two months ago that on 11th Monday at 10 a.m., I'm appearing for the Enforcement Directorate in the High Court Chancery Division against Nira Modi. Okay. I knew that two months ago. Yeah. So that's how the system works. And the case is fixed, the time is fixed, you go to the court, Either somebody drops dead, or the case settles, or the case goes on. So the extradition is going to happen? This is not the extradition. This is attachment of but some properties. But do you think for Malia and for... Nirav extradition has been allowed in both the yes, cases. Yes. It is waiting for a political sign-off. Right. Well, we feel so proud when we see you arguing at The Hague, and you know, we feel so inspired. I have one last you'll, question. You'll see me now arguing in the uh, European Court of Justice for the uh, athletes. Wow. You know the athletes against whom they have said where their testosterone levels are high, that's Semenya yes. and others. And we challenge it on the ground that that is discriminatory yeah. because gender has to be binary. Yeah. You cannot create a third. Yeah. We had uh, success in the first round, but let's see. Well, I mean, I, you know, even all the judges wait for your every word when you're speaking. Your stature is incredible, but I have one last question. How do you say thank you to someone who has taken you out of jail? By staying out of it. No. No. Don't do anything no. which puts you back there. No, no. You never know who puts me back. I'm <laughs> going to call you. Uh, I, and I'll tell you how you can do that. You have to give me a hug on stage for that. Thank uh, that you. That I will. Happily.